Hi, Global Entrepreneurs. Welcome to BGS YouTube channel. Um, we've had quite an interesting couple of months. We've been interviewing a lot of people in the Portuguese startup ecosystem, from venture capital investors all the way to startup founders and policymakers. We just wanted to share some more light on the Portuguese ecosystem, and we hope you learn a couple of things from these interviews. Enjoy. Marcos, thank you very much for being here and giving us this opportunity to um, speak with you. Uh, it's indeed a pleasure to have you here. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to open the, the floor by asking just to give a little bit of introduction about yourself so the viewers can know who you are and what Bright Pixel is. Of course. Um, so, first of all, thank you, thank you for having me as well. Um, my name is Mark, I'm an investment associate at, at Bright Pixel. Um, Bright Pixel is a, is a venture builder studio and early stage investor in, in Portugal. Uh, were founded in April 2016, so uh, roughly three years ago. Um, it was a, an initiative that was launched, launched in partnership with Sona Investment Management um, and our co-founders, who are, I would say, the, the most senior uh, tech entrepreneurs in, in Portugal. Um, so the, in, in the genesis of, of Bright Pixel is, the, is this idea of helping entrepreneurs addressing two main issues during their initial stages of development. Uh, the commercial traction, so uh, getting the foot in the door within big corporates in order to, to pilot solutions uh, and to test their products and to have feedback from, from real potential clients. Uh, and also uh, this, this need for continued funding that these startups in very early stages of development need. So this was this was the, the idea that was in the genesis of Bright Pixel, and I we also added the, the product development risk. So during the early stage of development, technology risk is a is a, is a real risk. So the teams are are developing uh, during their their product development, they they might make mistakes, especially if we're we're talking about more junior entrepreneurs. They make mistakes during that development that might hamper their the future growth. Uh, so we basically tackle those two issues. Uh, we have we support uh, and invest in pre-seed and seed startups, uh, so we can enter uh, right from day one, uh, like a, an entrepreneur in the PowerPoint, uh, and we also fund until the, the seed stage of development. So we cover uh, tickets as low as twenty to fifty k, for example, for for kick off a small project, up to one or one point five million. Um, so this is this is basically our activity. We are, we are uh, hands-on investors, so we, we don't provide as a venture builder studio. We don't provide as only money. Uh, we also provide uh, technology development. Uh, we also provide these these partnerships that I mentioned with these with these big corporates, uh, and we invest uh, on a on a global scale. Of course, since these are seed stage product projects, we tend to stay closer to home. So we have investments in Spain, Portugal, France. Um, but we, we don't have any geographic restriction. Okay, so you mentioned that there were serial entrepreneurs and that's quite interesting. So, how about somebody who hasn't started a business yet? And yeah. Because I understand the logic, okay, that they have more experience, more likely they, they, they know about their failures, they know what not to do, uh, things to do right in the next investment round. So, what, what, what would you say for people who want to start? Do they, do they have, don't, don't they have any hope with trying to find investments for five pixels or what can they do to so these this were two examples. We we have invested in the past in uh, first-time founders. Okay. So uh, actually, I would say most of our most of our investments are in first-time founders. Uh, this year was was a, a typical one. Um, but yeah, I think for entrepreneurs that haven't yet launched the company, what I would suggest is launch and, and go to market as fast as you can. So okay. So you're talking about the fact that a lot of um, LPs are not yet. Here in Portugal, so how can we change that narrative right now, or is that is that ever going to happen? Where you have big LPs coming to Portugal, like yeah. there's a lot of buzz about Portugal, like so we, we hope or we expect that that happen. But in your opinion, do you think this does that kind of that kind of thing will happen? And what kind of LPs are we looking for, like pension funds or pension? Uh, yeah, I would say institutions with a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, I think it's a, it's a matter of, so it takes time, uh, you have to build success cases, you have uh, to build failures and these, uh, all these things will build, uh, will also build the ecosystem, the, the accelerator ecosystem, the accelerator and incubator ecosystem, the VC ecosystem, the VCs also need to, to get experience into those, uh, into those uh, cycles. 
Um, and also uh, even the corporates, the corporates must be on board, the universities must be on board, so all the ecosystem must mature. Uh, and of course that comes with, with age, that comes with having startups that become successful companies, that those, where those founders and, uh, and early employees go and launch other companies, yeah, launch VC, yeah. VC, company, VC investors and that's, that's so it's it. Just, it's just a matter of time. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel that we are, do you feel Portugal is already on that right path, on that right track towards um, having that kind of flow? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, I think we, we have been doing a, a really good job um, in, in the last in the last ten years, as I said. So the ecosystem has matured. It has attracted the attention of very large uh, institutions. Large tech companies are coming to Portugal. Large VCs are coming to Portugal, if not opening offices, at least having a, a partner here. Mm-hmm. Um, the ecosystem is also maturing. You see a lot of internal initiatives from uh, new VC funds, uh, new corporates uh, working with startups, universities also paying attention. That's I think that's really good. So, so you've been in this uh, space, uh, the venture capital space, for some time right now, and obviously you've, uh, you've encountered some challenges and some bottlenecks. What would you say like are your most the top five, uh, top three bottlenecks, that, uh, and how did you resolve this, or how are you working to circumvent all these problems? Yeah, um, well, that's that's a tough question to, to answer. As I as I said, so you take you take your 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 constraints as a given, uh, and then you work with with what you have. But I would say that that our, our major concerns are having uh, having these players, the corporates, the universities, the uh, all, all these uh, these ecosystem ready to, to work with startups because. Um, you see corporates uh, are really, it's really hard for a corporate to work with a startup uh, because you don't, either you have a strong promoter in that corporate uh, and that doesn't ha- happen a lot in Portugal. So if you go to other markets, the US of course is, is a reference for that. So you, you have a, comp- uh, a person that's working in a, in a big corporate and they have all the motivations to work with these new technologies that are emerging because if they're successful within their enterprises, uh, they will be definitely uh, as, as a promoter of that company, they will uh, also get the part of that success. In Portugal, that doesn't happen a lot. That risk-taking ability from, from corporates, mm-hmm. it, it's not there yet. Yeah. Uh, and also, the, it needs, it needs to, that needs to, to grow and to evolve. And of course, it only comes with, uh, with experience and having uh, more closure to, to the ecosystem. And also on the side of universities, you also see this, this constraint. There aren't a lot of incentives for um, PhDs or master students mm-hmm. to, to do something else uh, with their project, to extend yeah. their project and create uh, uh, an actual startup. There aren't incentives for that. There are incentives is to, to build good papers, have yeah. FIP, yeah. uh, etc. So, and we started working with universities recently and we, we, we faced that problem um, from, from very early on in the, in the discussions and we're working towards having more closure to the university and more uh, proximity to, to and also to this to this corporate the corporate environment. So, so do you think this having this initiative is more like a responsibility of the government or do you think individuals just have to just rise to the occasion and take charge of these things and come up with this initiative? Yeah I think it's, it's a matter of culture. Uh, I don't I don't like the to, to, put, to say the government is a solution, I, I don't think the, the solution is in the government. Of course, there are incentives that the government can put in place um, that will help uh, startups or at least incentivize startups to work with star- to work, uh, sorry corporates to work with startups or universities to have their uh, to have their students launch launch more companies and doing something else from from their projects. Um, that tech transfer is, is, is not happening and of course the, the educational system also can do something through the government so I think that there's a lot to be done uh, we don't only look at Portugal so we, we as I said we, we operate on a we look at a lot of markets we, we look at the US UK Germany we also look in Portugal so it's uh, we, we see all the realities we see for example in the UK there are a lot of Companies that we look in the UK that were launched from universities, so they they finish the they have PhDs like they evaluate a hundred of PhDs and then they select five or six uh, and then hire a promoter, uh, a person with experience in that particular market in order to build build a, a product out of that. And that's that's a really good thing that we've been seeing coming out from the UK market, and we don't see it a lot that tech transfer happening in in Portugal. Okay, so that's very interesting. So. Um, in terms of like the culture, like you said, it's, a thing, it's more like the culture that's happening in the ecosystem. How, what can we do to ignite that culture? That is, it has to start from somewhere. Yeah, that's true. Um, well, it's, it's really hard. It's, a, it's a, it has been part of, of our history for, for a lot of years. So I think that will be really hard to, to change. 
Uh, but I think all these initiatives that are uh, these, all this hype that it's building uh, on top of startups, so startup ecosystem, entrepreneurial ecosystem, uh, so and people hear that. So people working at large corporates, people at new universities, they hear that they they saw news about the Web Summit, they see uh, news about uh, any investment of Red Pixel or any other VC. So when they they start becoming aware of this, uh, that this ecosystem ecosystem exists. And then, of course, as uh, as always, you'll have the early adopters, the okay. the people who will start working with, yeah. with engaging with this ecosystem sooner, and eventually they they become successful, and their peers start to to see their success, and eventually that that will pass uh, along the 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 adoption curve. Okay, okay so that's fantastic. So, um, quick one. Um, so, there's a lot of buzz about Postgres, especially in this one. Is it yeah. overhyped, or is it? Is it is it is it what it is? Is it, is it up to the hype? Yeah, so uh, I think it's overhyped, but it makes sense to be overhyped because it, it has grown really fast in a very short period of time. Um, so it, it's still pretty small when you compare it to to the startup ecosystem in the UK or Germany or France. Um, but at the same time, we're growing and we'll, we'll eventually get there. Um, so we, we just we're just hyped, but we also deserve. Uh, yeah. deserve that, that attention uh, because we're new, because we're young and we're growing really okay. fast. Okay. So um, did you did you know you were going to go to VC or was it somewhere along the line just that you know this is where I want to be? And would you advise anybody to come into the VC uh, space right now in Portugal? Yeah, so uh, people people usually say, yeah, what you do is really cool. Yeah, but uh, as most of the jobs, part of what I do is, is really is really good and I like it. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of stuff that you do, and, yeah. and, it, and it, you just have to do it because because yeah. it's your job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so VC work is really interesting because you're always speaking with new founders, you're always hearing these new ideas, and that's that's really exciting. Um, but then also you have to think that most most of the work that that I do as a VC and the traditional VC does, um, most of it goes to waste because well, it's not fully wasted because that knowledge uh, is kept within you. Uh, but most of the processes that we are, like 99% of the startups that I, that I analyze, I, I, we don't invest in them. So all that work that we do with founders, all that analysis, it, it goes eventually, we, we pass that along. Yeah. So we keep, we keep what, what we can, so we keep the, the knowledge of the market, that, that uh, experience that we got from the founder. Yeah. But then everything else goes to waste and that, that's, really, that's really frustrating. Um, but, I, but I really like it and I, I would advise uh, like if, if you really like to do all this, to hear these new ideas and do a lot of projects at the same time, yeah. this is a, a really cool industry. It's also a very lonesome industry because yeah. you're working a lot. Of course, we have we have a team and we work with a team, but at the end of the day, you're working in your deal and you're yeah. trying to find companies and you're speaking with entrepreneurs, but you a lot of times you're, you're all by yourself. Um, how do I got in PC? Well, I, I, started, I started working in, in M&A at, at Sonai. I never had the goal of, of becoming a, a VC. Uh, what happened is that at that time, uh, the, the team that I was I was in was launching uh, this corporate venture initiative uh, in order to invest in, in startups, and, and I joined. And I really I really liked it. I was I was actually uh, I liked it more than I than I thought I would. Um, and then eventually the opportunity to to join Bright Peak, so this new investment uh, investment arm, it came along. I I, I was really I didn't understand a lot about CD investment because yeah. I was doing previously I was doing Series A and B and that's that's a, a, another space. So I, I wanted to look into the more of the, the seed space and understand how these how these deals are done, how the how this market works, uh, what are the dynamics. And then I eventually joined Bright Pixel and I I'm really happy. I'm here for two years and I really like what I do. Fantastic. So um, as we as we're gonna round up, what is the next thing on Bright Pixel's mind? What is the next? What are you looking at? What are you looking at right now? Um, yeah, so we we, t we are looking into the, the sectors, uh, the, the those three areas that we there's a lot happening in retail, there's a lot happening in cybersecurity, um, not much happening in telcos, but we, we look we look at uh, at that at that space as well. Um, but yeah, I think um, we, we have a couple of deals uh, that we are that we are um, right now doing and negotiating. So I think. Those closing, I think it will be a, a good year. Okay, great. Thank you, Marcus, for speaking with us. And Thank you. We hope to do this some other time again. Yeah, Thank sure. You. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I hope you really enjoyed that video. 
if you want to know more about Portuguese startup ecosystem as well as the top promising scale-ups in Portugal, uh, make sure you go to our website at www.scaleupportugal.tech and download all our reports that we've written for the ecosystem. So if you just want to find out about what other activities we do regarding the ecosystem, how we accelerate um, startups here in Portugal, also make sure you go to www.bgi.pt and send us an email and we'll get back to you. Thank you.